Did you know you can have multiple closes in one note, and that those closes can either create one card or multiple? Do you know under which situations to use them and how to apply them fast with the help of customized keyboard shortcuts? Do you know how to pair your questions with images to ensure optimal retention? Did you know that closed deletions can contain hints, preventing you cards from being ambiguous? Did you know that you can switch between note types by just pressing a key and all you'll need is an auto hotkey script? If your answer is no to any of those, I welcome you to continue watching this video. This is Eldun Johansson. To illustrate this in the best way possible, let's take this example note. On the front of this note, our topic is H and E staining and what cell compartments are mainly stained by hematoxylin. The answer is the nuclei and the rough endoplasmic reticulum. I'll use the shorthand RER from now on. Additionally on the front, I added an image depicting stained endothelial cells. Their structure is very characteristic. This will make it easier for me to know what I'll be looking at. On the back of this card, I added a schematic showing a cell with its nuclei and the RER. I can absolutely recommend adding lots of images. As humans, we are highly visual creatures, and our brains have evolved to process and remember visual information more effectively than other types of information. By associating the information we want to learn with an image, we can presumably take advantage of that. I also want to establish proper visual cues, meaning I get reminded of the idea when I need it. If not, why learn it at all? It would be useless. Hopefully next time I see H and E staining, I'll be reminded of what is what. Okay, let's start making closes. For a question of this type, I like to use multiple closes in a single card. In case you do not know, a note is Anki vocabulary for what we are looking at right now, a collection of fields of information and how that information shall be presented in a single or multiple cards. I like to think of them as blueprints of cards. Cards are then the finished product you see when you review. Okay, back to the point. Why use multiple closes in the same card? You can see that there are two answers to the question, the nuclei and RER. Were I to use a basic note type in this situation, you know, those having the question on the front and the answer on the back, one part of the answer may be overlooked. In other words, I need to know how many answers is expected of me during review. Do know, however, that there is a limit to this. I find with three and more closes in one card, the card becomes too convoluted. One of the core tenets of good card creation is the so-called minimum information principle. If you have not heard of it, I recommend you to read about it in Supermemo's 20 Rules of Formulating Knowledge. Besides this, it has a lot of other good tips. I'll quote from the website, By definition, simple material is easy to remember. This comes from the fact that its simplicity makes it easy for the brain to process it always in the same way. Imagine a labyrinth. When making a repetition of a piece of material, your brain is running through a labyrinth. You can view a neural network as a tangle of paths. While running through the labyrinth, the brain leaves a track on the walls. If it can run in only one unique way, the path is continuous and easy to follow. If there are many combinations, each run may leave a different trace that will interfere with other traces making it difficult to find the exit. The same happens on the cellular level, with different synaptic connections being activated at each repetition of complex material. Now with that out of the way, let's get back to it. Let me put the answers on bullet points for aesthetic purposes. By the way, you can add bullet points and other formatting with the mini format pack add-on. Now I'll select the line and press Ctrl plus Shift plus C. This will create a closed deletion. I'll then move over to the next line and press Ctrl plus Shift plus Alt plus C. You can see that a closed deletion has been added with the same number. This means that they will show up on the same card. If I change the number on one close with any number, another card will be created where the other close will be visible. As you probably noticed, the keyboard shortcut for adding a closed deletion without incrementation was kind of awkward. That is why I have installed this add-on called Customize Keyboard Shortcuts. As the name suggests, it allows us to customize the built-in keyboard shortcuts of Anki. I use this to remap it to Control plus Shift plus S instead. Now if we want to add another close card, we can simply press the normal control plus shift plus C shortcut. A fitting close would be hematoxylin, I think. Before adding the note, I'll change the deck. Let us look at the result. As you can see, two cards have been created. They also carry the name of the deck at the beginning. This is due to a custom note type that I have created, 
Look to my channel, I'll be sure to make a video on that in the future. One problem I still have with this note though is that it is too ambiguous. Ambiguous in the sense that there are multiple answers to the same question. What does hematoxylin primarily stain? Answer 1. Basophilic structures. That is correct. Answer 2. Specifically the chromatin within the nucleus and the nuclear membrane. Also correct. You see, we need to add hints to the closes. Without this, one would have difficulty, especially after not having reviewed a card for a long time, to answer correctly. To add hints to closes, one needs to add two colons after what is being occluded. We then write the hint. As a hint, I'll enter cell compartments. I'll spare the second close as it can be deduced. Now, when we look at the result, we know what is asked for. Great, now let us move on to how to change note types by pressing a hot key. This will make adding closes even faster if you also use other note types. To do this, we need a piece of software called Auto Hotkey, or AHK for short. AHK is an open source scripting language for Windows, sorry Linux and Mac OS users. It programmatically exposes many Windows specific features, meaning you can do a lot more with it than I am showing you today. If there is interest, I can explore further applications in a future video. For now, let's continue. You can download it from their website, do that and install it. You are all big boys or gals, so I won't show you. Once you have done that, you can run AHK scripts. Let me explain the script for changing note type in the Anki ad window. I advise you to not skip this section as you most likely need to change the script a bit to match the name of your note types and the key you want to bind. Anyhow, you can find a link in the video description to my GitHub repository where you can download the script. I'll use Visual Studio Code because it has an extension for AHK language support, but you could use whatever, the simplest being Notepad. The first line of the script is a directive as signified by the hashtag symbol. Directives modify the behavior of hotkeys and hotstrings in the script that are defined beneath them. That means this directive will affect every hotkey in this script. This specific directive is called hotif, and in combination with the winActive function, it makes it so that the hotkeys will only be defined when specific windows are active. We want it to be active only when a window which is called add is active. There are other things than the window name that you can put in here. I recommend looking to the documentation for further information. We will use function key 1 for changing the note type to basic A. To do this, we start off by typing F1 colon colon. Before the two colons, there is the key we want to press, and after it, the action that we want to happen after we press it. Since our action includes several lines, we must enclose them in curly brackets. Inside the brackets on line 5, you see send input caret N. This is AHK notation for control plus N. Here we utilize Anki's built-in shortcut for opening the Choose Note Type window. Just try pressing the shortcut while having your add window active. You'll see that it opens. Back to the script. Send input, then, is responsible for sending those keystrokes to the active window. However, in order to prevent further keystrokes from being sent before the Choose Note Type window has been opened, we use the command WinWaitActive and type the name of the window we are waiting for. Once that has been done, we want to input the name of the note type and press enter. Notice that we have to surround enter with curly brackets. This distinguishes the typed word enter with the keystroke. All you have to do now is to write return. Do the same for your other note types. Save it and then run it. Once you have run the script, function one will be bound to this action until the script ends. To save you the hassle for running the script every time you start the computer, I recommend putting a shortcut to it in your startup folder. That's it. See you in another one.